Hi, I'm Sarah from New Coming. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, easy question first. Okay. Depending on how we think, what can people expect um, when they're going in to watch Evil Dead Rise? A jolly good time. Um, I think, yeah, I think what I want to create for people, and I hope the experience that people get from the movie is um, a roller coaster ride. It's a, it's a scary movie, so it's a dark roller coaster. But I tried to craft something that's really energetic, um, really gets under your skin, but just gives you a great fun time at the movies. That's that was the core thing for me. And I think horror movies are a great way to entertain people. So it's like, yeah, it's it's an audience participation movie. It's one that's best seen with a lot of people in the room. Um, um, and I dare people to not spill their popcorn. That was that was one of the things that I wanted. I reckon there'll be a lot of... I feel sorry for the cinemas, but there's going to be a lot of popcorn on the floor after this movie. So I watched it in a cinema with Dolby Surround Sound. Excellent. After quite a big weekend, and my nerves were in, a, you know, in absolute tatters at the end of it. Um, so you'd had a big weekend. <laughs> so that's what we call the fear in Ireland. Okay. Um, and it came out, but, you know, it was a thrill at the same time. And it had me thinking, what is it about horror? Um, you know, is it to make us feel something? Is it catharsis? Is there something about that adrenaline rush? You know, why do we love to be terrified? Mm -hmm. and why do you love to terrify people? Well, I'll start with why I love to terrify people, or at least the source of it all, was um, I'm the youngest in my family by eight years. I was a late lamb. And my family, my, I have two brothers and a sister, and my parents, everyone kind of liked horror movies in my house. So growing up, I saw stuff that I shouldn't have seen at a very, very young age. And within that, I was obviously, you know, I saw movies like I saw The Shining when I was seven or eight years old. I saw Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 at the same time as well. Um, but because I was young and scared, I'd obviously hide a lot from what I saw. And I'd find myself actually watching my family watching these things and the kind of crazy joy they got out of these movies. So ultimately, why I make horror movies is I'm just trying to impress my family. That's it. I'm just the little kid that's trying to show off to them. But why it's powerful is the fact that you can create such strong emotions. And that's what I saw when I was younger. It's like, wow, people can jump out of their seat, hide, leave the room, cover their eyes. Um, and then within that, from a storytelling point of view, there is catharsis in it. And I think horror allows um, you know you to place a mirror and to reflect and to maybe experience some of the darker sides of life would actually without going through them and um, like this is a story about a family falling apart and as dark as it is to say like that does happen sometimes so you get to actually look and explore these themes and these ideas without actually being in the center of them so it's good to get scared it's a good emotion and then i said it's good to then walk outside into the air and be thankful that you're not in that situation and this fifth film has been a long time coming so much discussion over what form it's going to take mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the sort of fans of franchises like this are notoriously sort of devoted. Yeah. So, you know, was that intimidating for you? And, you know, how did you go about making some of the decisions you did? You know, whether you call this a sequel or a mashup. Yeah. It seems like you've absorbed a lot from, from all the different films. Yeah. But put your own spin. The fact we're not with Ash in the cabin. In the yeah. We're in this kind of LA building. You know, we've got like a bit of a modern feel. Yeah. Um, and also balancing sort of the comedy, the horror, the gore. Um, more maybe the tone of the first film, arguably. Mm -hmm. I think, well, starting with the fans, I think from my point of view, like I'm an Evil Dead fan, but I'm also a filmmaker, so I have to leave my fandom behind and go and tell a story that I was interested in. But it was important to me, to, like essentially what I wanted to do was give the fans what they've been waiting for for a long time, but hopefully have those fans hold hands with other people who've never experienced an Evil Dead movie and bring them into the cinema and on the ride. And actually, we did a we did a screening last night and there was like this guy who's a big horror fan, but he's like, this is the first time I've ever seen an Evil Dead film. And now he's a fan. So that's very joyous for me. And, and I think fans of Evil Dead are like very, very small percentage toxic i think they they love they love the kind of madness and the way these movies kind of all don't quite connect but it makes this strange universe as such i never felt intimidated to be truthful i you know i was excited to make this movie the only thing that gave me any fear was if i didn't find a story i wanted to tell that i'd have to say no i'd have to pass on the opportunity of making a film that essentially is connected to my childhood dreams you know and um, so from that point of view I was I was nervous about getting the story right. And that was the key thing that I wanted to bring that was new was this storyline and these characters, the context and and the metaphor in the story, this kind of analysis of, you know, maternal fear or the fear of parents, you know, of being a parent was something. And once I found that, then I knew what a story I could tell. And then I just started to load in the horror on top of that.
I hope that answered your question, by the way. Um, and one can tell you about horror is just how creative you can get. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in some quarters, it's almost underestimated as a genre in that. Regard. Yeah. Um, I can never look at a cheese grater the same way. Um, <laughs> but that's the end of your cheese sandwich life. <laughs> how did you? How do you get these ideas? And then, obviously, from the idea you have in your head to pulling it off, and yeah. you know, the fact that everything is just so dialed up to eleven. Um, how do you make all that happen? I believe sort of COVID was a bit of an influence. Cause you yeah, a little bit. Yeah, out. yeah. So I wrote the screenplay during the first wave of COVID-19. I know we're all tired of talking about this now, but it's part of the, it's part of the story of this movie, which weirdly was me stuck in an apartment with an invisible evil force outside the door. Because at that point, we'd know, you know, you'd have phone calls of friends and they'd be saying, I remember one friend was like, apparently even if you don't go outside, it can get into your house. And... I was like, is, is that true? Because we knew, we kind of knew nothing at the time. So I'm trapped indoors, invisible force outside, wandering around my, I want to say wandering around my apartment was quite small, so pacing around, you know, like a rat in a cage, um, writing this screenplay on my bed. So I was buried in that domestic circumstance, and I think that added to some of the claustrophobia that is in the movie, and it allowed me to pay a lot of attention to the items in my house, including this this cheese grater that everybody has kind of gone... I knew it would be a fun moment, but I didn't realise it would become a, a, such, a, such a thing. Um, and, yeah, it was just... I wanted to use the object of every day that people recognize you know in in this story and in within the horror because one of the things i love is trying to create circumstances that are identifiable for people so that when they go home after watching the movie and um, they get scared again that's my favorite thing to do is when people actually can't sleep after watching my film or they go home and they're like i'm hungry and they open the cupboard they see the cheese grater and they're like not tonight and um, that's something that i i really enjoy doing um, almost out of time, but if you could say a few words about your incredible cast um, and and how you know part of the thing we're saying about tone balancing kind of the, the humour. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but also these moments of pathos, and you're really kind of you know drawn into you know this kind of, these these sisters, and like you said, the mm -hmm. kind of idea of being a mother. Um, how did you work with them to develop the characters and pull off some of these epic scenes? Well, thank you for enjoying the movie in those terms because it's great like the cast are everything character is everything and you always have limited time with your actors to prepare for the movie and the rehearsal process for me is never about like make like a tree stand in a corner read the lines any of that it's getting underneath the skin of the characters with people and filling their heads with backstory and having discussions about them and then getting those people to interact as a family was so important because in a movie like this you need to get to know the characters and hopefully love them quite quick um, because you've got to move along and, and get the you know the horror train really running. So one of the things I did, for example, would be like I took the whole cast and sent them off together to like the fun fair for the day, um, and just got them to hang out. And would often you know insisted because we only have one of the, only one of the cast is American, even though the movie's set in the U.S. So it was like instantly put them into that accent the entire time whenever they were interacting with each other, and just gave them time to be together. And then I was kind of like the grandfather that would pop in and out of that scenario for two or three hours a day. We'd read some scenes, we'd workshop some stuff. Stuff and just check in on how they were starting to interact and make sure that the the balance was right. And what was really interesting was to see how, and that gave me a lot of confidence, was to see how they started to gravitate towards each other as per the relationships in the story. Like one thing that always stuck out was little Nell Fisher, who plays Cassie. Whenever she was tired, she'd go and cuddle up with Gabby, who's Bridget, which is something they kind of do in the movie. They comfort each other as well. And once I saw that, I was like, this family are clicking, uh, which was... It's a real confidence builder as a director when you know that your cast are going to feel natural um, and then in turn super terrified on the other end, which we prepped hard for. Tough for this cast because at a certain point in the movie, their heart rate never drops below you know, 180 beats a minute. So they had to be in very heightened states all the time. And just very quickly, you know, what's next for you and are we going to see another... A sick film? Ne next for me is a nap later on, because uh, I've been on the road. Now, uh, next for me, look, uh, like, I, I love Evil Dead and I would love to be involved in, 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 in future entries to the, to the series. I think, you know, at this point in time, I've made this movie and I always think let the audience decide. I'm so audience focused how people respond to what I've done. Um, and then within that as a writer, I've got a couple of different projects on the boil, all with, in the horror space, but in different places. There's definitely a big part of me. My first movie is quite a quiet psychological horror. This is punk rock 
punk rock horror dialed up to 11, I kind of maybe want to go and make something again with a different tonality because I'd be terrified trying to top the intensity of this movie right now. I'm not saying it's going to be quieter or any less frightening, but maybe somewhere else inside the horror playpen for me. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I cannot wait for everyone to see Evil Thank you. Thank you so much.